Okay, so part two of this development blog, vlog, even. It's, better, it's easier than saying blog video. Anyway, um, I'm going to talk about the navigation of the buttons and how I got them to change to different scenes. So, for example, I'll run this game. How I got the how to play button to go into this frame and how I got that back button to go back to this frame. Or how to have two different play buttons. And as you can see, it's fully functional. And oh, that's another thing. Also, to when you die, you have two options to quit the game, meaning going back to the menu, or when you press again, then you start again. And then you quit. So. I've made the game very open in a way. And I'll show you one more demonstration. So if I. So if I get an ink. Oh, died. So if I get an incorrect answer, then I'll just go back to the menu. So. Right, so I made some actions within the frames. So first off, I added mouse.show, so the mouse will be shown. It's no good for it being hidden, because if it was hidden, then you wouldn't be able to see the mouse cursor at all. So first off, I had to import... So this line of code here, basically it imports a Flash event. Basically import an event within Flash. And that event then is this. So I gave an instance name, this button an instance name, and I added a dot. So then I added an event listener, meaning that it's going, I'm going to give it like a sort of function. Like not this kind of function here where I am identifying this name into a function. So actually yes, I will be it will be a clicking function. So when so I had to like identify what this click to go to scene was going to be. Well F one underscore click to go to scene. I had to identify what that was going to be. So I added a function and I retyped the name of what this function is going to be called and added an event added a mouse event and then I did the argument brackets so braces they are called as you can see so within that it basically is going to say movie clip this route so when so when you press it it's going to go into a different frame same for the how the C underscore CB, which was originally controls, controls but, but basically I I gave it an understanding of calling it a controls button because I had to be the controls for it. I'm gonna add a comment here to identify what this button's going to be. Okay, so basically what I did here when I put the two forward slashes there, it adds a comment. And when you add a comment, it won't interfere with the code in any way. So if I put how to there, then the game will basically crash. Because I it's action script free is presuming that I'm going to write a new line of code when I'm not. All I want to do is add a little comment. So I'm labeling those functions really. I'm going to label this one too and call it play button. But who? Oops. But who? Nope. Nope. Right. Got there in the end. <laughs> okay. I got there in the end. So that covers those two. So when you press the how to play, it goes on to the how to play scene. And how I got the line of code is. I press on this here, and this uh, button is called Code Snippets. And you click on it, 
and it, you have various others so you have actions it's basically to show an object or to hide one timeline navigation which is where it's going to so it's like a timeline navigation think of it as going forward and backwards so for example you click to go to frame and stop then it's going to go on to a different frame within that scene and stop and just pause etc and it's basically the same for scenes but for this uh, I'll get it up in the timeline I had to change them to stop I had to change some to stop because well I had to change this one to stop because it was going to be a still image if I change this to play yeah it's just gonna play it's just going to skip that screen and go on to the different scene it's just gonna skip it basically so we'll have to change this function to go to and stop because we want it to be still like this so we want that to stay there so we can read it okay so that gets it, the navigation out of the way now I'm going to move on to questions so we run the game again as a demonstration correctly answer this then you go onto the correct screen and you have a button which I just pressed like on the side when I I'll, I'll tell you what I correct this answer again and I'll explain it okay so you go on this correct screen and there's a button of next question now during the same process of how I created the button from the start menu basically I pressed F8 to convert it into a symbol and I drop down the the symbol type to change it to button and I double clicked on this button and you know basically gave it four frames and changed the outline so like as if it's being hovered changed the color so like as if it's being pressed okay so that demonstrates that um, so we're gonna move on to the game so we open the call actions line here try and find it okay there it is right so when you press so basically I gave it a function when you press the flower button so I had to add an event listener first which is a clicking event listener into flower one and I had to make a function for this go to and scene 1a which is what I had to call it but sometimes they can generate a number from the amount of function from the amount of functions that you've created it can change to a different number so if you've made 10 and you make a new function then it'll go to f1 underscore click to go to scene underscore 11 so it'll be counting up from the amount of functions that you've created well the amount of function titled names that you've created so I added a function for that mouse event and that function will go to and stop number one which is the number frame so the first frame and basically what I had to do is I had to make quotes and those quotes I had to type in the name of the scene so those quotations instantly recognize the type of scene that I wanted to go to if it's pressed so that was how I did the correct now we move on to the correct scene okay so basically I had I've created eight layers well one two three four well I created eight layers for the correct and I've made two four fun actions with the A basically inside the frames I don't know if you can see there's like a little A inside the frame and that A basically means actions which is to indicate which frame has sort of action script inside it okay so so when you get the first question correct basically you will get a option try and find it there so 
then I gave this function here to go to the next question and that next question will basically go to the next question which basically says so I put it onto frame 3 the reason why I changed it to go to frame 3 is because the second question is in fact on the third frame this is because if I just basically change it to go to frame 1 then it will just go to frame 1 but I want I don't want it to go on to frame 1 because I want to move on to a different question which is on frame number 3 so that was why I gave them different frames and it goes on so correctly answer B then you go to correct number 3 uh, correct the answer, no, correct the fourth answer then goes on to the fourth correct and that fourth correct screen click to go to the next question goes to the fifth screen goes to the fifth question which is on the Pacific frame so on to the fifth question which is frame number eight or seven I can't quite see because it's really small although I could really change the size by large here so five six seven eight okay so it will go into the A frame and etc okay now to move on to the incorrect so if you click on the other two buttons so three and seven which are in fact prime numbers then basically the game will directly take you to the incorrect screen where this animation plays so it just goes down to show that it's incorrect and you get the button here which navigates you to the start screen to the start to the menu even so when basically what I did is regardless of what question you answer it will go onto the incorrect screen and you'll have to start again how I did that is design purpose really because if you incorrect if you incorrectly answer a question then you'll have to understand how why it's incorrect and you basically in this game you learn from your mistakes which is what you do in a workplace so it's not only just a maths game where you just basically make a mistake at a slap in the hand well, in correctly and incorrectly answer for basic functional skills it is also to it is also to learn from your mistakes as well so if you get told off then you can simply learn that so you can simply learn from that and improve on your faults okay so that was the incorrect right now in the next video we're going to move on to how I've made the wasps move and to change them onto random x-axis on the y so stay tuned for the next video and I'll just discuss the enemies